what I'm going to do is show you how I catch the fish for free, not buying any bait whatsoever. Okay, the first step in uh, crabbing is to get the bait for the fish. So, why, why go out and, uh, and uh, pay for blood worms, you know, the cotton worms, when you come in into, look at that, look at that monster. And when you, you put them into a, a container, uh, you know, it's a cardboard container, it's got leaves and it's got stuff for it to stay moist and uh, cool. And what you do is you run your fingers through a moist area. And uh, you come across all sorts of worms. And more action in them, more action are going to be on that hook. Just as good as blood worms. And they're free. And as long as you have moisture, you're going to come across worms. Alright, when you're all done, put the grass in the... The clipping's all back, so more ants will come. I mean, <laughs> I'm dealing with ants too, I'm sorry. But uh, more worms will come up. And uh, we'll take those and uh, go fishing with them. We'll catch some spot, and then we'll catch some crabs. When you're, done ca when you're done catching the worms, and you don't plan on going crabbing for a while, keep them, in a, keep them in a garage or a cool place. I put them inside of a thermos. It stays really cool. That's my plastic uh, crab that I've done. Uh, hoax. That's my crab lines down there. That's uh, the bag has my sunscreen in it and uh, little chem wipes and stuff like that. But keep your worms in there. They'll stay uh, nice and cool. They don't need a lot of oxygen at all. And just close it. They, they keep for a good week, uh, even longer, as long as there's moist leaves in there and uh, and they survive. Okay, this is a, a video taken after all the other videos you're going to see after this video on, on uh, the same show. Anyway, uh, what happened is uh, when I was showing you uh, fish and, uh, and, uh, and I was uh, catching all those crabs, I uh, tried to, catching a fish that day and couldn't get any. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, with a video on the different side of the bench, in the same area. I have two worms, I have a, actually one worm split in half on a, on a hook. I uh, set the bale back and I'm going to shoot it on out there and see if we can get something this time. Okay, so the worms that I, I uh, pulled out of the uh, yard, okay, uh, out of the grass, I went ahead and uh, put on the hook and uh, we're actually going to see if they can do something. Quickly. Okay, after a long time, I think I finally got one. Yep, it's pulling, it's kicking pretty good. So, uh, I like that little uh, kick every once in a while, make sure it's still on there. Once it comes to the surface, I'll see, yep, he's still on there. It's kicking pretty good. Feels like a spot. Yeah, there he is. And it is a spot. This is what we're looking for for our uh, for crabbing. Went off of one of the ground worms that we that I uh, went out. Got see the little spot on the side of it. That's a spot. If the fish comes up and croaks and is not nine inches long, you need to throw it back in because in Maryland, off the Texan River, it has to be nine inches long. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to cut it up in two to three and then we're going to go ahead and uh, use it for crabbing. I'm not going to show you that because it's kind of gross to some people so you figure out how to cut it up yourself. All right, But you want to get as many of these uh, uh, you can for crabbing and then you go on from there. Let me uh, point out a little something about the net. Okay, you want a nice wide net, no oversized holes, a nice loose net, not one of those wired cage things because they'll climb right out of that. You want to get them tangled up in there when you're bringing them up so they're not going to climb out. This is a hand net. 
that's tied to a, uh, um, a long telescoping pole that goes to a pool. The cheapest way, you go, go to the, uh, a pool place and buy a, buy a, a long pole net and then take that little uh, leaf skimmer off the top and you're going to uh, drill some holes in, cover up, cover up the uh, holes with good, good tape so you don't scratch yourself on the way down. But uh, that, that's the cheapest way to get a really long net. This is, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some, uh, do some uh, crabbing with just a line, uh, a piece of fish on the end of the line, and then taking a big net, such as this guy. This guy is long enough to go all the way down and scoop something out of the, uh, out of the uh, water. So uh, if the net is ready, I'm using the fish that I uh, caught using the uh, earthworms that I told you in a different video. Actually, it's going to be the video before this one. So, so um, what I'm going to do now is I have everything set up. I'm going to toss these in the water and have, uh, have the strings going straight down. Right now, I'm going with the tide. And I'm just going to toss these out. And I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to do it with each, each one of these. And it, it takes a little time uh, tying them off. So after this first one, I'm going to just, uh, actually I'll do another one, for sure you'll see it. One more, there's times when I thought to throw two down, and they're allowed to have five lines here at uh, NRC Solomon's. They have five lines and uh, put them in there. The water's only about 20 feet deep, so uh, it's okay. Okay. Um, Oh, okay. If your line's not really that long. Okay. This is a fish tail. So the, 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 the fact is, if you get uh, if you get chicken from the store, I mean, outside of the tuna commercial, there's really no chicken in the sea. And uh, crabs go after what it comes from the sea more than anything else. So i got two more of these to put out, and I'm going to pause the video right now. Okay, what I have is a couple of lines being pulled out. So I have two crabs on lines. And my goal now is uh, to catch them. Whether they're too small, or whether they're females, whatever it is, my goal is to catch them. So I'm going to put the net in first. It's submerged. The idea is that it uh, that it's not going to scare them away when the net goes down. Now the lines are crossed, so I don't know if that's going to affect them. It's uh, a okay, uh, if it's it's got colored uh, it's got co colored cross, so it's a female. So I, I'm going to get this underneath it and swoop it up, pull the bait out of its mouth. And there is a crab. It's a female. Can't keep females in Maryland anywhere on the production off of here, so I'm just going to take it and turn it over and throw it back in. I'll probably go get another piece of bait. And now I'm going to go down on this other one. It's pulling out pretty good, so it's another nice size crab. I'm going to pull them in. Nice and slow, nice and even. You can feel them fluttering around the back two fins uh, on the crab or swimming. When it goes limp like that, he let go. So he's off. somebody down there eating eating my food and it's off to the right too so that means there's a crab here or something pulling it and usually crabs are the only one that get this yep it's a crab it is it looks like a male it might be too small five inches until July get underneath it come up and got him so there's a crab I'm gonna take a look. He is too small. He's a gotta be five inches. It's a male. I got another one being pulled out. You see how busy I am with lines. Baskets don't work. You don't know. I got another one on this being pulled out this side. So 
idea of staying busy, the more the merrier. Let's see if it stays on. Let it go again. Oh, he's on. The small one he swam with. So that's a female again. So never get discouraged on uh, too small, too many females because you know, the more you catch, they love fish, but they don't really. Uh, so we got another one on this one. Hopefully one of them I can keep. Here we go. Notice I put the net in the water, it's submerged. I'm not going to distract that crab when it's up close by putting the net in, scaring it away. Here I go again. He's a smart guy. Now, I'm going to bring this back in. And uh, looks like another one. So you see just in this short span, just how busy check this one because it's pulled off to the right. There might not be anything. It might be a small one. But whatever a crab's eat my fish, the fish will go fast and it's easy to pull apart. And I'm just going to reset it. So here we are, ready to go again. I'm going to pause the video because uh, it will get busy here pretty soon. But it gives you an idea. It gives you an idea of just how busy you can be when you have lines instead of cages and traps. You have lines. That one's being pulled out right now. So if I if I keep going, I'm going to run out of memory on that memory stick on the camera. So I'm going to stop it now. Okay, a line's being pushed out again. Pulled out. Put the camera on the other side of the pier so it'll take a while to get over here. Head in the water all the way, pull it in nice and slow. Patience is a virtue.